Over the past few years, I've had the privilege of working on 32 different e-commerce stores, and we've learned a lot from going through these. You just can't distill down and get in a normal design course. So the point of this video is to really showcase what those major seven learnings are gonna be so that you can apply them into your e-commerce store and drive up those conversion rates. Now, these aren't just surface level. These are gonna be game changers. These are gonna be things that you may not have considered, and some of them might be really obvious too, and that's okay. But the whole point of this is, at the end of the video, you're gonna have something that's gonna make things look better, better to use, and most importantly, drive those conversions that you're after. You'll also be surprised at the smallest changes and how big those differences can be when we do them right. So buckle up, because by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what you should be doing on your next e-commerce store to make sure those conversions are really good. So tip number one is that your homepage is not the most important page on your e-commerce store. Your most important page is your product detail page. And I think this is more down to the design process that a lot of people will run. And they'll very much focus on making that homepage look absolutely perfect and have videos and lots of different sections on and sections for this and, oh, let's get this across here. And I think the problem you'll have is a lot of your marketing is going to bypass that homepage completely and it's going to go to your product detail page. And that doesn't mean that your homepage isn't important, it obviously is, but please focus on that product detail page more than anything else. And if anything, feel free to start your journey there. You know, how's that gonna look? What's gonna go in there? It doesn't mean that we shouldn't plan everything else out as well, but I sometimes think it can almost be an afterthought. And actually your product detail page is gonna be the most high converting page. It's gonna be the one that drives those sales right. So let's make sure it's really, really well considered. Now to add to this, I would say that when we are designing things out, I would also wireframe your product page first. And I think that's because it's very, very easy to focus on like what looks really, really cool. And actually what we need to consider is what's most important to the user. Are we answering their concerns or their objections? And are we answering those in a really visual manner? And focusing on a wireframe instead allows us to really think that through rather than getting overexcited with how pretty it looks. Obviously we do want it to look amazing, but that should come secondary. So that's really all part of my point one. Point two is speed of the website. And this can sometimes be overlooked because we're too busy making the design look really pretty, right? But when it comes to the build, the site has to be absolutely rapid when it is loading in and to interact with, because if it's not, we're just gonna lose those people and they're gonna go somewhere else. So it can be overlooked and that's a really key one. Now you might be thinking, well, how is that a design issue? And I guess it is and it isn't. So a really, really, really great developer will be able to make most things work, but they're not always to get hold, they're not easy to get hold of. And also it can be way more time consuming and therefore more expensive to make something really, really rapid when it's at the build stage. So one of the best ways of doing that is considering your design when it gets to build. So if everything has video all over it and loads of animations and loads of other things going on, it's naturally going to slow the site down. And actually, if you're in a competitive area and you need to have that speed of sight, there's a balance that needs to be considered between making it look aesthetically beautiful and making sure it is rapid. So please do consider that. And I think the number one place where that should be considered is on your mobile. Because on your mobile, you might not be connected to Wi-Fi, you might only be on 4G or 5G, and therefore we need to make sure that the overall appearance and how you load and navigate through that is absolutely rapid and that can be overlooked. So please don't do that. So the next one is quality of the imagery. And I'm gonna use this example here for spoke. So they're doing some really nice things here. So they know that most of the people who are buying from this just want to look at the quality of the imagery, want to see the quality of the product. So they purposely made this section with the imagery a little bit wider, so it's taking up more space. We can click into them if we want to, but they're being very selective with the elements that they're pulling out and they're trying to show the quality. So when it comes to selling individual products, yes, we want to see them on their own so you can get a good look at them, but actually you want to see them in situ as well. So you want to see where they look like paired with something. You want to see how they sit on the trouser leg. They're really considering with their imagery here. So for example, when you sit down or sit on something, you can see how far they pull up, you can see what they look like around the knee. We're also zooming in on the details. So you get to see the buttons on the back, you get to see the crease marks, and you get to see the zip, the clips. There's a lot of what they're doing here is just visually answering any questions or concerns that the user might have. And most people's photography isn't this well thought through. And this is why I love this particular example, because it's immediately making your life easier as a designer because you've got this quality of imagery. So I'd say if you've got a photographer that you're working with, brief them in because this is the level of detail that I think 
we should all be aspiring to. So point number four is do not force your user to have an account with you on that first purchase. And now this is actually pretty standard in Shopify, but it's not standard on some of the other ones. So I'm going to highlight this out and I'm using Gymshark for this. So do have a guest account and do have you know your main account that you'll have. If you're desperate to have an account, the way I would do this is allow them to go through the purchasing journey. And then once they purchase, get them to turn that into an account automatically. And that might just be an email afterwards to say, thank you for working with us to create your password so you have your account with us to access your information about your order, please do it here. But I think there's a lot of issues where you're forcing the user to sign up for an account before you purchase because you want all of that information to sell to them. And actually all that happens is you miss out on that first sale. You don't get that first sale and you suffer for it. So Gymshark is great at this, right? You've got your options just to get straight in, fill in your information and there's order and they'll probably ask you afterwards and actually even so that the login button that they have is really small and doesn't take up much space that's how much they know this is a really critical way to work so please really consider that and this might be if you're a designer watching this you might really need to sell this to your client right yes we do want to collect their information but it's all about conversion rates and we should make the conversion rate as high as possible by making the journey as simple as possible and we do that by removing steps so let's just get them buying get them into it and create the account secondary afterwards. And that moves me on to point five, and that's always have two variations on how you buy something. And again, Gymshark do this really nicely. And again, is natively built into things like Shopify already, but not all stores are doing. It. And the way I would reference this is there is a membership card account and there is a credit card way of buying. And the way Gymshark do this already is I log on here and depending on the platform that I'm on, so I'm on Google Chrome at the moment on the desktop, it knows I've got a PayPal account, it's allowing me to either buy with Shopify or it knows because I'm on Google Chrome, it's offering me to pay with GPay as well. It's really nice that it's doing that or I can just flow through and I can just fill in my card details. And this is a really key one, but some people have all of their card information on them or they might have it saved into their desktop or they might have it saved onto their phone already and for those people the ability to just use apple pay google pay or paypal which means they don't need to have all the card details in one of them is really really key but some people especially a slightly older demographic prefer to just type their information in they just want to type their credit card in they don't want it saved in the cloud they don't necessarily view that as a good thing they view that as a security risk so they like the idea of just entering their card information in and then therefore purchasing afterwards so making sure you have both options is always best to cover for your users and it'll be interesting for you to see that depending on the e-commerce store that you're designing for and the user type that you've got you'll probably see a demographic that some people prefer to always put their card information in and some people prefer to just use a membership account like apple pay or paypal and that's completely fine but i would always just say make sure you've got both options it's definitely the best way to increase those conversion rates okay point number six is all around navigation and i guess this should actually be almost 6a 6b and 6c because there's three parts to this and that's because there's three main ways that people will navigate a site i'm going to show two of them on the spoke site and i'm going to show the last one on a different option but a breakdown of these are these are going to seem really obvious but they're not so the first one is obviously the navigation the main navigation that we're going to interact with so has it been well thought through not just a case of having those options on there and we've got everything going on which can feel really really busy you'll see in this spoke example here that the overall menu navigation is really really well thought through so for example if i'm buying trousers they're immediately offering me in a way that i'm thinking it's like do i want them to be smart casual or smart if it just went straight into options like sharps and linen sharps and smarts or something that there's other language here with these brand names i wouldn't necessarily know what they mean so instead they're really thinking them through to be like what place are you going to use these are you going to use these as smart casual smart or casual and then off the back of that, then we'll give you the options afterwards. I also like the colors and how design led this is. It's really, really nice. It's why I wanted to include it, mainly just to give you all some inspiration for some ideas that you might be able to take advantage of. But that's your first one is making sure your menu is really, really well thought through. Now, the second way that people scroll, and this is especially popular on a mobile phone, is they will ignore the menu and they will just scroll. So they will interact with the site based on options that are given to them. So if we take Spoke as an option here, as we scroll down, we're being given 
linens or cubans or we can get into some of their basics that they're offering. Now, if we've got this far down the page and they've not done something that we wanted them to do yet, maybe they need a little bit of salesmanship on why we should be looking at Spoke in the first place. So Spoke is going into a little bit of detail now. It's kind of referencing, did you know it's custom fit? Did you know it's all crafted? Did you know you get free delivery? And if you didn't know that and you're still concerned because you've not purchased and that you've not tried to look at anything else yet, Let's build some credibility. And that's what's really great around these slightly longer pages now is we're trying to cover for these options that they might be interested in. If we haven't pushed them to one particular place yet, we haven't pushed them to an area, let's build some credibility to try get them to stay on the site a little bit longer. And then the third option I'm gonna show you on this website here called Chippendale. I'm gonna show you that a lot of people will go straight for that search bar. So as a reminder, it's gonna be the menu system. It's gonna be just scrolling down and interacting with options that is given to them or it's this one here which is going to be the search if you can think of the amazon website as an example you've got a big blue area with a big white bar taking it up and that's because they really are forcing everyone to try and search for them that's a couple of extra tips that i want to give that really search really really useful is if you just use a very traditional standard search where you type something in and you get every single page of that information in that's fine but it's not great and we're trying to create really high converting sites here so one of the things to take into account is you'll see here i've typed in digger is you'll see that there's then these options that are broken down so it's a little bit wider in length it's showing it in a few different ways so you use like here's the products that match here's your collections that can also tie in so if you just want to see the, the overall selection of all of the products that fit on the digger or any blog posts that we have you can see those separately it's also hiding out if you just want to get to all 21 products you can do that and that's a really nice way of doing it now the other thing i want to reference here and i always say these words slightly wrong so don't take the mick out of me too much but it's a cinnamon so a cinnamon is the idea that as a word can have multiple meanings so let's say i go onto a website and i type in a rubber duck i type in rubber duck and i go to and see loads of individual rubber ducks for me to buy but if i type in bath toy it would also show me the rubber ducks and that's because through the search system i've linked those two terms together and the reason i wanted to make reference to that is that's an area where just because you call it a particular term doesn't mean that the general public call it so you can have lots of different people that are typing stuff in that actually they're looking for something in particular and the reason i've actually noted this is this is a real world example because these guys are a client of ours is actually they refer to them as excavators that's what they call them but actually most of their clients not all of their clients but a portion of their clients will refer to an excavator as a digger and it doesn't say the word digger on any of these product pages it always refers to them as an excavator so what we've had to do is we've had to build in that cinnamon to say if you're looking at a digger then please make sure that you reference these particular products because they're, they're actually meaning these. And then another quick win is if you don't have the ability to do that in your search facility is obviously make sure that you add those terms into those individual product pages or like we've done in this category page, we've added it into the title to make it really, really clear. But if you can imagine if you've got 10 different ways of saying a word, you can't put all of those in there, it's going to be messy. So the best way to do that is with a decent search facility system where you can really look at every individual thing that's been typed in. And if there's anything where you're not getting the results you expect, that you can link those up afterwards. And then point seven, to really understanding what your users' concerns and objections might be. It's probably the most important one in all honesty. And I actually have some videos completely separate that speak a lot around this one in particular. The idea is almost like, what is the user's internal monologue when they're looking to buy something? In this example here, this is London Socks. This is a big collection of individual socks. There's going to be some internal monologue that's going on when you're looking to buy a pair of socks, right? So like, does it come in my size? Because they're global, it's like, well, actually, I don't need a UK one. I need to see it in US size. I need to see it in EU size. So you can have those sort of items that get pulled. But even just having some basic iconography is a really important thing. So some people like a thick sock. Some people like a thin sock. Some people want it somewhere in the middle. So just having some form of iconography to represent that is a really easy easy and digestible way of doing that. Another concern, and I'm not gonna lie, not a concern of mine when I look for a sock, but if you're spending this amount of so on socks, then you probably need to consider this, is like, what length is the sock? Do I want it to be really short like a pop sock? Do I want it just above my ankle? Do I want a more traditional length, a high length, or even a welly sock? So actually we're visually answering these in a really simple, nice way. We're also showcasing how it can look. So we're answering some of those concerns. And because we've identified quite early on when this was being designed, that we really need to showcase 
showcase the imagery but making sure those really stand out and we're making it really easy to purchase from now if they've not bought from that maybe they need to learn a little bit more around quality so they can click off to our quality to learn more or they can also watch our advertisements or other videos that we might want to include so this video has had a couple of different uses over the years of what we might put in there at the moment it's showing their newest advert but it's these sort of things that really really need to be considered so if you're going to get onto your product page what sort of things you want to do i want to show you one more example that looks really really well of this now another really nice example of this and i wanted to briefly show you a slight variation on this is x trucker with their gaming chair they're trying to answer as many potential concerns that the user might have as possible so first off is the overall price and they're referencing you can pay for klarna so that's all fine they're trying to showcase the imagery and you get to see the quality of it but then they're breaking out the text to be like it's long-term comfort it's breathable the headrest is adjustable it's got supportive armrests they've also got photos in a slightly different way that kind of show the detailing of underneath as an example but then they're also highlighting out other key details and they're also referencing the overall fit which is going to be really key they have got some reviews and then another concern might just be overall dimensions is it going to fit into x space or is it going to be too large for another reason even being able to download a product manual for someone to have a look at to see how easy it is to put together you can see that this is being really well thought through to try and answer as many concerns as they might have so the fact that we're doing that is only going to be a winner and that's it guys those are the seven big takeaways i would say from designing 32 different e-commerce stores now there's probably more and we could do a really really long video but those are definitely the best place to start if you've got any thoughts any comments anything you want me to look at please comment below and give us a like thanks bye